Hello everyone and welcome to episode 13 of the Karo Khan vs Everything speedrun. In this series we play a 15 minute plus 10 second rapid game on chess.com and regardless of whether we have the white or the black pieces we play it in the Karo Khan-esque setup attempting to essentially explore the ideas of the Karo Khan with both pieces but obviously you would play in practice the Karo Khan with black rather than white. And while I'm playing, I'll try to explain my thought process to you guys so that not only will it hopefully be entertaining commentary, but you can also potentially learn from my thought process. Real quick before we get into the game, I want to give a big thank you to my channel members, Nicholas Andre and Andre Ilshin. I think that's how you pronounce it. Uh, they will have seen this video about a day before the rest of you are seeing it because um, it's just a member benefit. But anyway, if you want to help support the channel, please consider becoming a channel member for £5 a month. With that being said, let's get into the game. Okay, we are facing Raja Cholan from India. And of course, we're playing C3, which is technically the Saragossa opening, but it's the Karo Khan from the white side. And my opponent doesn't go E5, he instead goes E6. So I'm expecting him to probably play D5. Of course, we're going to play D4. And knight f3 looks incredibly natural. I want to avoid playing bishop f4 and going into a London system because that's not what I want to do. And my opponent plays c5. Okay, I think we might have actually had this exact variation like l in a previous episode. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to play e3. I'm going to lock my bishop in and we're going to go for a collie. C4. See, that feels wrong. That feels incorrect because the c5 pawn is good at putting pressure on d4, and it means that it makes it difficult for me to play the move e4 if the pawn is on c5 because my opponent could, say, I have a knight on d2, do something like takes, 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 and force me to have an isolated center pawn. Now, with the move c4, he does control a couple of squares deep in my territory, sure. But I'm going to undermine this pawn with moves like e4. I'd love to put my bishop on d3. Obviously, I can't. I could go b3. But even... He, he will have many moves, but he could just go b5, probably. We could play a4 preemptively, stopping b5. But I think e4 is the more um, pressing matter. Moves like knight d2, queen c2 to help support this pawn push is what I'm going to go for. We could put the bishop on e2. But I actually don't think there's much of a rush to castle because of how close the position is. Um, my opponent can't play e5 because we control that square twice. He controls it zero times. So it would take him like knight to, sorry, bishop d6, knight c6 to even attempt to play the move e5. And we could play moves like queen a4 to try and pin the knight, but like, whatever. I think queen c2 is the move I want to play to go for an early e4, which again, like if he takes and takes, summit, oh, come on, please. Yeah, yeah. If we have takes and takes, the c pawn will be undermined because the d pawn would no longer be guarding it. And after we play e4, we can choose whether we want, we want to take him on d5, or we could even push to e5, or we could just leave the tension. I feel like we're kind of in control of the pawn breaks here, because like I said, his pawn break is e5, and that's incredibly difficult for him to manage. He goes b5, which makes sense. Just trying to support the c-pawn. We could consider the move a4. But I don't like the prospect of b4. Because then he could play b3. So I want to leave the pawn on a2 for now. So that if he does do something like this, I can just take him. I, you could move the pawn to a3 if you want. To just stop b4 altogether. But I feel like that's wasting a move. Like, that's just a complete waste of a move. I think e4 is the move I want to play. We can also consider Fianchettoing to add extra uh, sort of protection, but e4, bishop b7. That looks like an interesting variation. Then maybe we have to push. Or if, like, e4 takes, takes, bishop b7. Maybe we're not prepared yet. Maybe we're not. Uh, we could consider the move b3. 
if he takes, then um, he's just going to lose a pawn because bishop b5 will come with check. So b3, we are trying to take him. If he takes with the d pawn, we get good control over e4. If he takes with the b pawn, then I guess e4 might come with more threat because the c pawn would actually be undermined. I could play a move like bishop e2, but I think b3 kind of poses the question. Again, like I said, he can't take because of bishop to b5 check. If he goes a5, I think I want to take. We could consider the move a4. Again, he can't take because this comes with check. a4, if he tries b4, take. We're just winning a pawn. a4, what else can he do? If he takes like this, then we're going to take like this. And... That looks very good. He does have a passed A pawn, but it's not going anywhere. And we have a lot of attack on it anyway. I think A4 is probably the move. I don't think I'm missing anything significant. Yeah, he takes like this. So, important to throw in this check first. And we're just going to be up a pawn here. Up a clean pawn. I think taking with the queen is probably better, because our knight is controlling some important light squares. And, you know, the knight's not actually doing anything um, on the b3 square. It's kind of just looking at squares that we already control. So, yeah, let's take back with the queen. We are now up a pawn. I would like to play the move c4. I want a castle, and I want to get c4 in. It would give up the b4 square to a knight, potentially. But c4 would try and undermine his center. Bishop a3 is a move we can consider, but I don't know how much I like it because it's just helping him to develop I suppose or like trade off his undeveloped piece um yeah I think castling can't be bad we can consider like takes takes knight, e6, knight to e5 um but I don't see a need to trade off our bishop right now because it's a really nice piece so let's just castle you know he could play a move like rook b8 to pin me but it's really not that scary. We could also play moves like rookie one to try and play e4 and break apart his center like that, which looks like a decent plan. Looks like a decent plan. This bishop is, of course, a bit of a problem, and e4 would also help to liberate the bishop to square like g5 or f4. Is my opponent threatening a move like knight a7? No, because I can take with check, so it's not actually a pin. So we don't have to worry about our bishop until he castles then we might have to move our queen to like a square like c2 we could play queen c2 to help support the e4 push and preemptively get rid of the pin on our bishop i'm a bit worried about a move like rook c8 threatening like knight b4 with a pin because we can't take as our queen would hang so i don't want to commit to that too early c4 is tempting but we actually i don't think carry a threat if he takes us and we play knight takes then i like it but he can just not take us and he gets this b4 square so rookie one looks pretty tempting just with the simple idea of going e4 and trying to get my pieces out a bit c3 could potentially be a weakness but remember we are up a pawn so if we end up sacrificing a pawn for, like, positional dominance by developing our pieces quite quickly, that's not the end of the world whatsoever. So rookie one is the move I want to play, I think. Don't think he has any threats. Nah, let's just go rookie one. Let's go rookie one. I mean, okay, this has been a very successful opening. My opponent is quite passive. We are up a pawn. We have a really nice outpost on b5. We control e5. And e4 is ready to play. Ready to play. Of course, you could consider playing something like c4 and then e4 to put even more pressure on d5. But I think e4 we can start with. I think I want to start with e4. We could consider bishop a3 to try and trade bishops. But I think he just castles and ignores us. 
if we play bishop a3 and he trades with us, then fantastic. But he probably will just leave the tension, and then we've kind of wasted a move, I feel like. So let's go e4. Let's strike. Before my opponent manages to castle, of course he could castle this move. And then what are we going to do? We could play e5 to attack the knight. The knight doesn't have many squares. It also it does take tension off of d5 though. Let's say knight e8. It is kind of out of the game. But I don't know where I'm going to put my pieces. I feel like I want more open lines for them. So, hmm. If I take, probably knight takes. Again, we can consider this move c4. Because then we have a bit more of a threat on d5, because we have a ton of pressure. And um, we defend the d4 pawn, obviously. So, c4. Then if he takes, then we open things up. And I think that's in our favour. We could even get a move like c5 in to try and lock him down. But c4 does again relinquish this b4 square. And I really don't want to do that. I don't like the prospect of that. I don't want to take because of knight takes. And that's quite a good knight putting pressure on c3. e5... If knight to g4, h3, knight h6. Hmm. Here, here. We could play a move like knight to f1. So that if he retreats to h6, we can take with our bishop and ruin his structure. That would be nice. We are up a pawn, remember. So even if we don't get an insane advantage in the center, we can just preserve our extra material. We also make it difficult for him to develop this bishop because he can't play e5 if we go e5. I don't know what other improving moves I can make, really. Queen c2 maybe is good. I can consider this move, just breaking the pin on my bishop. Take pressure off. Because I suppose knight a7 is actually a problem now. Because I can't take on d7 with check. So queen c2 does look good. And if he goes rook c8, I can just go queen to d3, so the, the pawn can take, and this isn't a pin. So yeah, let's go queen c2. I, I can play e5 whenever I want. Like, if he takes me, I feel like that can only benefit me. Yeah, I think this is good. This is good, because now our bishop opens up. This bishop can come back to d3 if we want to get on this diagonal. Um... Yeah, this bishop can come out to f4, can come out to g5, can even go to a3 if we want. I think we should take with the queen, of course, because this queen is incredibly active. Knight a7, uh, bishop d3 is the move I want to play. Just threatening mate. And it's difficult to stop it, really. Yeah, and also if we come back, his knight is completely out of the game. Completely out of the game. If he plays like f5, then e6 is a massive weakness. If he goes g6, then we have bishop h6, forcing the rook to move. And then we can try and get him on the dark squares. If any, if nothing else, we'll weaken him massively. And we also develop our last piece with tempo. And like I said, this knight just isn't participating. Yeah, let's just drop back. After a move like g6, we can also play something like knight e5 attacking the bishop. Plays f5, so e6 is a permanent weakness. Queen e2 looks good. Just supporting the bishop on this diagonal. Um, keeping pressure here. Knight e5 on the cards. To like take, take, and then take. I think I want to keep my queen on the e file to keep pressure on e6. So that knight e5 comes with a threat of taking the bishop and then taking e6. We also control the b2 square. So if we develop our bishop... He does not have rook b2 because we control that. I know c3 is undefended. But like I said, one, we are up a pawn. So if we lose the c3 pawn, it's just equal material, which isn't that big of a deal. Because we could try and exploit this e pawn. 
and try and get him on the e-file. The a5 pawn is also potentially weak in the future, which, you know, could be very, very promising. I think this has gone incredibly well. And yeah, it's, it's really, like, making me reconsider whether I should play the collie more often. Okay, bishop c4 looks good. Because knight e5 now, he probably takes. And it's probably not even that good to take. But I don't even want to give him the option, I don't think. If bishop c4, he does have rook e8. Hmm. We could go bishop a3, but then that just induces rook e8, which I think is where the rook wants to go anyway. We could go bishop to f4, attacking this rook. Probably moves to like b3 and goes after c3. But then bishop c4 would come with a fork, and he wouldn't have time to play rook e8 because we'd be attacking here. So something like takes, 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 takes. King moves, takes. No, not there. That's not even that good. That's not even that good. Bishop c4, rook here. We could just go knight in. Or we could just go knight in straight away. And attack this. Because that is a threat. And if he takes, then queen takes. Knight c6. Attacking the queen, obviously. You can probably just go queen back to e2. And then we have the only dark squared bishop on the board. Which could be pretty deadly. Maybe we start with bishop to f4. And if rook to b3. That's my only problem. I like bishop f4 because then we can play knight to e5 and if takes we can take with the bishop instead of the um, queen. So bishop f4, I just want to try and figure out this line. Rook b3, bishop c4, rook c3, takes, 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 king moves. Uh, what do I have? What do I have? Here, sorry, here, 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 there, 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 there. Um, I'm trying to like do some kind of fork on these two pieces, but it just doesn't exist. Doesn't exist. Okay. What if we go bishop c4 straight away? Then rook b3 isn't playable. Bishop c4, rook e8, bishop f4. He can't play e5. He also can't play rook b3. That looks good. So we're going to switch up the move order. The bishop c4 gets played before the rook goes on to the b3 square. I think I like this. Yeah, now bishop f4. Bishop f4, rook c8, knight e5, our queen supports the bishop. Looks good to me. The pawn is pinned so he can't advance it at all. Let's just attack this rook. Uh, that looks like the most natural move. Of course. Rook c8. We don't have to play knight e5, but I think it's the best, or like, yeah, it's the move I want to play. We're threatening this. Let's do it. And remember, our queen is defending the bishop, and if he takes, we can take back with the bishop, probably. This queen takes, hangs the rook. Oh, game, don't lag, please. Chess.com servers have been absolutely horrific lately. Absolutely horrific. And I mean, look at these bishops. They are absolutely gorgeous. And he can't even challenge us with his light squared bishop because it can't go to e6 and it can't go to b5. 
and he's going to struggle to challenge my dark squared bishop because he lacks a dark squared bishop. He could go knight c6 to attack it. That's a move. It's a move. Yeah, he does it. Um, we could just play bishop f4. He still can't move. Bishop g3 might be a bit more safe. But this does stop the queen from coming out to g5. Although that doesn't matter anyway. Doesn't matter. We could go bishop g3 and then try and play like b5 maybe. Was an option. I think we should preserve the bishop pair. The knight is kind of just blocking his own rook's activity anyway. And where's the knight even going? The knight can't go to e7 because we'll take on e6. The e-pawn again can't move because of the pin. King h8 might be the best move. Just breaking the pin. Okay, queen f6. Is d5 a good idea? No, c3 hangs. Okay, interesting. We're up a pawn. We have good pressure, but how do we convert this? How do we convert this? Hmm. Tricky. Tricky. Could play bishop b3. To get the bishop off the c file and protect a4. Bishop b5, but I don't ever want to do this because then we got opposite colored bishops and that could be drawish. And obviously, I don't want to draw here. Queen a2 is kind of tempting to add more pressure and get the queen to the queen side. Is that, is that useful? Queen a2. Then maybe double rooks on the e file. That looks like an interesting idea, you know. That does. I think I like it. He is threatening f. Oh, he's threatening f4. Ah, maybe. Then takes. Takes. Uh, f4 is a threat. I think. Queen f3. Relinquishes defense of the bishop, though, so it is tactics. We could play f4 ourselves to lock down this square. Honestly, I'm going to do it. It just stops this from ever being a thing. It gives our bishop escape square on f2. And we, we just don't let him play the move e5. Okay, now we can just win the pawn, though. And with rook c3, rook here, here, and something like this, this, that should be winning, I think. I don't know if he just missed that he cut his connection off. I know we can win the c3 pawn, but there should be too much pressure on the knight if he takes. Uh, you could probably play it, yeah, move like knight d5 to go after the pawn. Probably double up is the best. Take, take, take. He has some activity, to be fair to him. Hmm. We could trade and then push c4, though. My bishop is kind of locked out. I'd love to put it on e5, but I can't. But we do have connected past pawns. We're up two pawns now. Up two pawns. And these are the pawns that were up, which... They're pretty nice. They're pretty nice. Is this a threat? I don't know. King f1. don't know if that's necessary. He's attacking a4 as well. Um... Going after a5. Check here. If he takes, then take. 
Bishop e1 might be good. I'm going to do it. I don't think I'm blundering anything. But our bishop is kind of useless on g3. Take take. I think I take. I think I'm happy with that. Oh, wait. He does have this move. But then we have this. Ah, yeah. We have this. And if here. Because we take back with the um with the bishop. Is the important bit. Ah, no way he can go for this. This is completely losing, surely. I think he had to play rook a8. And then he probably wins this pawn, but things aren't easy. So I was planning, like, bishop to b5, here, check, here, check. Maybe. It's not a problem. Here. Maybe we can even go here. I was going to say we could sack the bishop to push the pawn. Attack the knight now. I want to try and um, dominate the knight with my bishop. That's what I'd like to do. Like a move like knight b7 would be terrible. We control the knight's movement. Ah, if I could put the bishop here, it'd be perfect, but I can't. So let's just drop back so we can at least control his forward movement. If he goes back to c7, we control these squares anyway. Oh, game, don't freeze on me. The chess.com servers have a horrible habit of freezing at the moment. And it always seems to happen when I'm in low time situations. It's very frustrating. One of the previous videos on the channel, I literally lost because oh, in, in a winning position because of the chess.com servers. I love chess.com, but come on, you need to fix this, please. Please. Um, okay, he's actually setting up a bit of a barricade, and it's kind of difficult to get in. I think c4 should, sorry, c5 should win, though. We can probably come around this way. I don't know if c4 is playable or not. Knight c7. Probably king c4, stopping knight b5. We need to try and kick the knight off of this square, though, because he's controlling some important squares. We could go c6. No, not now, though. Not that. Not now. We can't. Hmm. Yeah, we need to boot this knight away. We could, of course, sack these pawns to go and win these if we get the opportunity. He's really putting up some stubborn defense, though. It's a fair play to him. But we might be able to put him in some kind of Zugzwang. Play something like this. Does, um, can we go a6? If takes a7, the only way to stop the pawn is to move the king, and then he loses the knight. That's a bit more accurate, but he's going to get Zugzwanged. Because the knight is now completely dominated by the bishop. I mean, obviously the bishop doesn't defend b4, but our king defends b4. And that was my idea, to dominate the knight's movement, to make it difficult for him to do anything. If his king retreats, then our king comes in, and it's just going to be game over. Like I said, we can even just run this way to collect these pawns if we wanted to. He's done a good job of putting them on light squares, of course. Um, that was smart of him, so that our bishop can't touch them. Hmm. But I think he's kind of shot himself in the foot now. I mean, he didn't have many options, to be fair. I think he put up some very nice defense. But I think this should be winning because he's just running out of moves. Completely running out of moves. Yeah, let's just lock this down. Pass the turn back to him, essentially. We could have played g3 and then like takes takes and then again pass the turn back. But I want this exact configuration of my king and bishop. I want them in these exact positions. So his only other legal move is with this pawn, which gives a pawn up. And on this, we just bring the king in. And yeah, we have some massive threats now. 
probably just c6, king a7 to keep an eye on the knight, and then c7. And if he goes back, we can just promote, takes, and then take the knight, deflect the king. We could also literally just go pick up the h4 pawn if we want, but I don't see a need to allow the knight back into the game. Like I said, I wanted to set up this domination geometric pattern between the knight and the bishop. So, because knight, knights are always tricky, right? They're always going to be tricky, so I don't want to allow anything. I don't want to let him do anything in this position. Just choke the life out of the game. I'm up two pawns. Like, I don't need to do something fancy. I just need to win. And um, in classical games before, I've actually gotten compliments from quite a few players, <laughs> actually. In um, end games, I the way I like to play end games, especially when I have a lot of time to think, is to just choke the life out of the position. Even if there's something winning, I like to give my opponent zero hope, like zero chances, because I want to be 100% sure that I'm winning and I haven't blundered anything. So, And I can do that when I have a lot of time. Uh, so it's kind of just my style in end games. I don't know if there's been there's quicker wins. Maybe the quicker win is literally just go win this pawn, play g4, play f4, uh, f5 even, create a third passed pawn. That might be the best way of going about this. But I don't play like that. I want to give my opponent nothing. By the way, if you've made it this far into the video, then I really appreciate you watching and I hope you are enjoying. Please smash the like button below. And if you're not subscribed to the channel yet, bro, you're like half an hour into this video. Hit the subscribe button. Get my videos recommended to you more often. And you can watch more of this chess content. I hope you're continuing to enjoy the future of the channel. I've been really enjoying it. And um, also, please let me know if the mic, like how the mic's sounding, because I've been playing with a bunch of things on the microphone. It's no longer in the um, screen, as you can see. Um, but I think I had too much air going into it. Like, I was putting too much... Um, breath towards it sort of so i've moved it further to the side to avoid that my opponent just isn't moving this is very weird i think he might be timing me out but um yeah we'll see no he's moved of course we're going to snap this knight off immediately that was the whole point of setting up like this and then we can just move the king in and the game is very simple we're just going to throw these pawns forward we do have to be a little bit careful not to stalemate the opponent because obviously you don't want to stalemate because we're completely winning. But yeah, I'm not really concerned. We can just go promote this if we want. I think he's trying to look for a stalemate. Go C6. I don't want to do this because then he could stalemate himself on A8. But if I leave these two squares for him... Wait, this? Yeah, he can move this and then we just mate him. So that's fine. Yeah, he, again, he's trying to put himself in a box, but we can just promote to a rook either and it's still checkmate either way. And there we go. Very solid game. Really enjoyed using the collie system this game. I think my opponent's C4 push in the opening immediately was just wrong and I think we undermined it very nicely. Whether Queen C2 was necessary or not, I don't know. But we'll find out in the analysis. I encourage you guys to stick around for it. And I hope you enjoyed the game. All right, let's get into the analysis. So 88.9% accuracy for myself and 80.2, 80.2 for my opponent. Pretty good game, considering I didn't really know the opening. Well, I, I say I don't know the opening because I don't play the Collie. Like, this is the second time I've ever played the Collie. Um, but one, it wasn't a real collie because my opponent went c4, which was very strange. But I think more importantly, um, it was just like many of the same ideas of the Karo. Um, like if my opponent were to have pushed c5 in a Karo Khan position or like a Slav position, I would have done many of the same things anyway. That happens in the Slav quite often, which is of course very similar to the Karo. But also, a lot of the moves I thought were quite intuitive. Um, but anyway, let's get into the game analysis. So, c3, e6, d4, d5, and knight 2, f3. So, this entire setup of, you know, this combination of pieces 
is just made to control the dark squares in the center incredibly well. My opponent goes c5, and of course I don't want to take this pawn because it's just bad. Bishop takes, he gets an incredibly active bishop. I just lost a central pawn for a flank pawn. And, you know, I probably have to play moves like e3. My opponent can develop incredibly easily, like knight f6, bishop d3, knight c6, castle. He can maybe even go e5. And things are just not good. Black has a major advantage. So I go e3, just shoring up my center. Again, I know bishop f4 was the best move, but we're not playing London's here. And I think, I think the reason my opponent played c4 is because a lot of the time against the London, let's just throw a couple moves in. I think c4 is an idea against the London and it's valid. Maybe not in this exact position because of b3 straight away. But maybe you throw in like a5 or a6 or something first. I'm not entirely sure. But I know c4 in some London positions is a viable idea. So maybe that's why he did it. But yeah, he goes c4. And it's just weird. I play knight bd2. b3 straight away was apparently good. But yeah, he, he kind of has to take me, I suppose. And then I can just take back the a pawn, open my rook up. Maybe my bishop comes to a3. It's just very comfortable. But initially, I was thinking more so about going e4. My opponent goes knight to f6, which makes e4 a bit harder. And again, b3 is a good move. e4 is apparently still playable, because if you take, I think knight e5. And um, yeah, c4 is way too weak. If you go b5, probably b3 or a4. A4 and yeah, white is much, much better. E4 might even fall in the future as well. I chose Queen C2, which was the second best move. Uh, it, it's just never going to be a bad move, right? You're controlling E4, you're developing your queen. It's not, it's, it's never bad. The queen is very, very safe on the C2 square. B5 played by my opponent. We go B3. A4 was a bit better, but I didn't like the idea of B4. And to be fair, b4 is better for black unless I find one specific move, which I'll let you try and find. I think this isn't like a tactical puzzle. This is more of a positional puzzle. And I think based on my explanation in like during the game, if you were paying attention, then you should be able to find the move. So I'll give you a second to do that. If you want to pause the video, go for it. The move is b3. You have to play b3, and the engine is actually kind of changing its mind. I don't think it actually likes the move a4 because of b4 now. b3 is the only move to maintain really just equality. Everything else is better for black. Black can do something like this, and can take on c3, or can go a5. This just looks good for black, to be honest. And if you play something else, let's say you play knight e5, Black, I assume, just goes b3, and I was terrified of this. I was like, it's one thing allowing c4, but it's a whole nother thing allowing b3. Because you can claim that c4 was like taking up a lot of space, but b3 is a different monster. Now the b-pawn is immobile. We can't challenge the b-pawn with the a-pawn, which is why I said I didn't play a4, because I didn't want to allow this. And I'm like getting absolutely choked out in this position. Like... My opponent has such good control over the light squares. E4 is my only way out, and it's not even easy to make happen because it moves like bishop to b7, just clamping down on the e4 square. I'd have to do some drastic stuff like, I don't know, f3, g3, bishop g2, queen e2, and then e4. And it's just not good. It's just not good. The computer wants to try and sack the pawn as well. I suppose like you could do something like this. But black, of course, doesn't have to comply. He can just develop. So anyway, yeah, I chose b3 instead. And my opponent went a5, which was just kind of strange. I don't really understand what the point was. a6 was a fine move. Bishop b7 was a fine move. Because I'm not actually threatening anything, I suppose. If I go a4 now, then a6. And the point of bishop b7 was to protect the rook. There's something like takes, 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 takes. Black's okay. 
black's okay. There's no need for white to release all the tension like this. White can continue building tension. So he doesn't have to play all the exchanges. My opponent goes a4 though. Sorry, a5. And e4 is apparently playable, but a4 is by far the best move. Because the point is, if you take on a4, I'm not going to take back. If I take back on a4, black is equal. The point is to take on c4. And if you take me, then uh, bishop takes or knight takes. We can also take on a4 first with check. And if something like bishop b7, I assume you can just do this. Or apparently the computer just says retreat and c4 is going to fall anyway. But white will win a pawn. And a5 will be incredibly weak. It's a passed pawn, but it you don't control any of the advancing squares very well. So it's going nowhere. It's just going to get chopped off later on. My opponent chooses CB3, though. Um, so yeah, I just showed you what happened if he went for BA4. B4 was potentially a bit more stubborn. And I was going to do something like BC4, BC3, Queen C3, DC4, and then we just take, and it's good. My opponent probably shouldn't be taking here. Bishop B4 is a decent move. Back in the Queen, Queen C2. Bishop a6, and yeah, I've got to be a bit careful with what I do in this position, because if I play some, I, I can play c5, that is actually quite nice, something like this, um, I just have a very strong passed pawn, I have good control over e5, can maybe put a knight there, challenge his bishop with a move like bishop to a3, maybe go knight b3 to stop him from trading the bishop for the knight probably play g3 king g2 this is just very very comfortable and white is very solid in this position and just up a clean past pawn he chooses cb3 and yeah you have to take on b5 with check first because if you take here he's just going to take me it's still better for white but it's equal material so of course we take on b5 with check bishop to d7 and we take on b3 if my opponent takes me on b5 a takes is probably the best because again this pawn is going nowhere and we now have a very nice passed pawn on the b5 square maybe we can try and support it with a move like c4 i think the computer likes this line something like this and if my opponent tries to blockade i can win the a5 pawn apparently although that does look kind of risky i think cleaner would be something like rook takes or just trading on b6, or just castling and completely ignoring my opponent. But we go for this line. We go knight c... Well, my opponent goes knight c6. I castle. There's no need to exchange anything immediately. We are up a pawn, but we don't have any past pawns yet. So the game isn't quite won, and we also need to finish our development. My opponent goes rook b8. Queen c2 is good in this position. I think I got a little bit spooked by the move rook c8 because knight to b4 is a bit of a threat but queen d3 i think i could have just done that which is what that was something that i was looking at in the game um during my live commentary and i thought this was just very very solid rook b8 we go rook e1 an absolutely fine move knight a7 doesn't work because yes you're putting a lot of pressure on the bishop but i can take with check first you can't take with the queen because the rook hangs. So something like knight d7, queen c2. This knight is going to have to come back into the game. So you've kind of just wasted a move. And then we get e4 in. We can go queen d3. We can go rook b1. It's all very good stuff. We choose rook e1, bishop e7. I was considering the move bishop to a3. And if my opponent takes me, I thought it was very good because he's going to have to play queen e7 to try and castle. And then we force the queens off the board. And being up a pawn, of course, we want to do that. But I thought he just ignores us and he castles, which is the best move. And if I take him, I don't know, I wasn't thrilled with this. I thought that we were just wasting a lot of time because we're playing bishop a3 and bishop e7. We've wasted two moves to exchange and he's just sitting there getting development in. So I thought it was more important to play e4. We have castles. And I considered the move e5. And after a move like knight e8. I mean we have a lot of space. But I wasn't sure how we actually progress in this position. I think the idea might be. 
to drop the bishop back. Let's say my opponent plays a nothing move. Or knight b3. Bishop. No, it likes bishop d3. And let's say h6. Just making sure I can't take here. Knight b3. Knight c7. What's the idea? I don't actually know. Maybe just building up a kingside attack is the whole point. But I thought it wasn't actually that easy to break through, so I wasn't sure how I'd go about it. My knight's never going to hop into c5 because he can just take take and ruin my pawn structure. And although the computer says I'm better, mm, I don't see a need to allow any of this. This is just good for black. Like, relatively good. So I go queen c2. My opponent takes me. And queen c2 is kind of just a waiting move. It's improving the positioning of my queen because this is no longer pinned. If I'd have played a waiting move like h3, then knight a7, and black is almost level. Like, black's fighting back very well, and it's no longer plus 1. It's no longer above plus 1. It's plus 0.7. So, of course, I don't want to allow this. I instead go queen c2 to break the pin. And if something like knight to a7, I was just going to play bishop d3. And I could have maybe taken on d7, but I think bishop d3, and we're just lining the cannons up on the king side. I can't draw arrows, apparently. DC, but my opponent goes de4, which I thought was just kind of helpful to me. Knight e4, knight e4, queen e4, knight a7. Of course, I drop the bishop back. We threaten mate. Upon g6, my plan was bishop h6, rook e8, and knight e5. And we just have so much pressure in this position. If my opponent plays a move like bishop to f8, I can apparently support my bishop with a move like queen f4, but we could also just trade, which isn't the most accurate. But it's like his dark squares are forever weak, and I can apparently lift a rook up or something. And f5 is a must-play move at some point. So my opponent goes f5 in this position, and it's the best move. You have queen e2. Queen f4 was playable, but queen e2 is also good. Bishop to f6, bishop c4. So I was having a bit of a conundrum in this position, and I spent three whole minutes out of my remaining six. Because I liked bishop f4, but after bishop b3, sorry, rook b3, bishop c4, rook c3, bishop e6, bishop e6, queen e6, king h8, I wasn't sure what I was doing here. Apparently I just go rook ad1 or rook ac1, bishop d6. I can't take here uh, because rook f3, gf3, bishop d4. Apparently this is good for black. <laughs> okay, whatever. I just didn't want to line things up. I chose bishop c4 first though. Because my idea was after rook e8, bishop f4, I lock down the e5 square. He can't play e5 yet anyway, but I just lock it down and he doesn't have rook b3. So he goes rook c8 instead, which puts pressure on the bishop, but the bishop is defended. I go knight to e5, trying to instigate. Because my idea was, let's say something like knight c6 is played, trying to get the knight back into the game. I was going to take his bishop, and then we were going to go and take on e6, and trade a bunch of pieces off. My opponent takes on e5, though, and I thought this was just bad, but it actually isn't. It's actually quite a smart move. I did think he might play king to h8 to break the pin on e6 and make sure that taking gear didn't come with check in the future, but he didn't. He goes knight c6, um, we go bishop to g3. Bishop f4 might have been better. The computer does like bishop d6 actually. I didn't give this enough credit. The point is, this bishop can't actually move, which means the queen can't attack the bishop. And... Our bishop is just like in his position and he can't do anything about it. That's really, really cool. We go bishop g3 because I wanted to be ultra safe. Queen f6 was a good move because he is threatening to go f4. If I did something like queen a2, which was my original plan, then f4 and I just lose the bishop. Bishop's trapped. I think I'm still okay because I can go for this. Takes, check. Here, takes, takes, and I have, what, three pawns for the piece? But I think this always favours black. So I played f4, which was a mistake. Queen d2 was good. 
defending the F4 square. And I did consider this, but I disregarded it quickly because I didn't want to give up defense of the bishop. I was worried about moves like knight d4. Apparently I can just retreat or I can play bishop to e5, something or Ah, there's also a bit of a skewer going on once I save my bishop. So I could just play a move like bishop a2. And he's running out of moves because he's going to lose this bishop potentially. f4 is apparently the best move, but it's still completely winning for me. So I went f4 in low time. In low time, in fairness. Knight b4 is good. What? Cb4. And then queen d4 with a double attack on the bishop. I mean, I think the point is you get into an opposite colored bishop endgame by force. I can go b5. And it's just equal material. I'm a bit better. And because there's two rooks on the board still, maybe I can win this. If all the rooks get traded, I think it's just a draw. But a5 is quite weak, and it's locked on a dart square. My opponent goes knight e7, though. And um, that just allows me to trade everything on the e6 square. And my point after rook c3 was the... Okay, apparently d5 is the best, but I was just going to go rook a to e1 and go after the knight. And if he tries to defend it, then he just can't. I was going to go bishop h4, king f7, defends the pawn, but then I can start advancing. And the black position is completely frozen. He literally can't do anything but shuffle this rook on the 7th rank. And then d6 comes in and it's game over. So that was my plan. I didn't actually see knight d5 until we got into the position. And the issue is, if I try and play a move like rook a to e1, my opponent exchanges on e6, he wins the c3 pawn, puts the knight on e4, and I don't know how I win this. So I found rook takes e8, which is the best move, then rook e8, and then c4. We force the rook away from the c-file so it doesn't control the c4 square, and then we go c4. Get these pawns rolling, and make sure they don't get taken. Knight c3. Knight e2 is an idea. I did consider the move king to f1. So that this didn't come with check, because he's attacking a lot of things there. Ultimately, I chose bishop e1, which is a mistake. King f1 is the best. Bishop f2 is also a move. I don't know why I didn't play this, to be honest. I think I didn't like the fact that I lost the f4 pawn, but I guess that's inconsequential. Because I just start pushing, and the knight is, you know, not really attacking the right things. I chose bishop e1, though. So after knight e2, king f2, I honestly didn't even see that d4 was hanging in total honesty. But I saw something like knight f4, bishop a5, and I was winning. And if he took here, then I was like, oh, bishop a5, and we're good. He does have knight b3, but I was like, I have rook e1. And as we see, see in the game, after takes takes, I'm good. Because I get my bishop out. Rook a8 was the move I was expecting. And I thought I could still win this. Um, what was my plan? Oh, bishop b4, rook a4, rook e8, king f7. I thought I had something here. Like a check like this. King f6. Rook b7. I am better, but it is going to be difficult to prove. And knights are very, very tricky. I kind of let the game slip a little bit. Um, instead of bishop 2 e1. I should have just con gone king to f1, and if he went knight to e2, then I can just push. And this was way, way easier than what I played in the game. But my opponent allowed me to exchange the rooks, which made my life incredibly easy. Knight c5, a5, we save the pawn, bring the king up, bishop b4, knight a6. I would have loved to play bishop d6 to dominate the knight, but I can't do that. So I chose a3 instead h5. I don't care about the king side pawns. He isn't threatening anything, so I keep moving my king in. I then go c5 to try and bring my king round this way, because otherwise there's no entry points. Knight c7, king c4, and king d7. And now, again, I can't enter the position. So I decide I'm going to try and dislodge this knight with the bishop. King c6, bishop e5, and then knight to a6. I was expecting knight d5, to try and, you know, give me some checks or threaten some things. 
But a6 I thought was winning because the king can't get back and I'm covering a lot of squares. Um, knight e3 is the best. And it is difficult to get out of checks because king b4 we just get checked again. So king to b3 is apparently the best move. If you take, then I just promote though. So he isn't actually threatening this pawn. He just has to go back. I can go a7, king b7, and then bring the king in. Knight e7, bishop b8. I thought this was a little bit more stubborn, potentially. And here I probably just run the king over here and win all his pawns while his king is occupied. Maybe play something like c6, c7 to occupy the knight as well. I think it would have been more stubborn, though. The problem with knight a6 is that it allows bishop d6, and his knight now cannot move anywhere because I control everything. And it puts him in a bit of a zugzwang. After h4, we go h3. Again, passing the turn back to black. And he just has so few moves. If he moves his knight, I take his knight, right? So if he moves his king, then I bring my king. And he's going to have to move his knight. Because what else can he do? If he goes king a7, I just push. And he's going to be forced to give the knight up. He can either move the knight, he can give up a pawn, or he can move the king, and then just lose the knight, and I'm going to checkmate him. He chooses knight b8, of course we take it immediately. King b6, and yeah, as long as we make sure there's no stalemate tactics, then it's an easy win from here on out. And um, yeah, f3, rook c8, I mean, we could have promoted to a queen, but it didn't really matter. And yeah, it's just a classic checkmate. And I thought it was a very, very interesting game. My opponent fought back well in um the end game here and found some very accurate moves bishop e1 was not good i should have played king f1 if i had more time i think i'd probably find that or bishop f2 because i was thinking i need to get the bishop back into the game maybe i find that and give up the f4 pawn if i have a bit longer to think but hey ho that's a game very interesting and maybe i can convince some more of you to try out the collie system for yourselves because it is similar to the Caro at the end of the day, and I think my uh, channel has a lot of Caro players. Anyway, with that being said, thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.